Good morning. Go. Kevin, do you want to sure, start sure. there? Uh, good morning and welcome to the Community Development Block Grant Revolving Loan Fund Committee meeting. Uh, today's Thursday, October 24th. Uh, we will be discussing a uh, loan um, application that we received from Midwest Super Speedway. We have the owner of the business, Zach Reiner, here, and also his lender, Will. We need, um, to, run through, we need to run through roll and put it over the agenda. Okay, yep, we will. So, uh, anyway, so do you want me to start with roll or? Whatever? Sure, go ahead, Wendy. Roll, we have uh, Chair Matt Schuler. I'm here. Vice Chair Ace Champion. I'm here. Alderman uh, Bill Morgan. Present. Eli Hicks. Here. Thank you, everyone. We have a forum, so we um, Chair, do you want to take it or? Yeah, I will take it from here. Uh, so our first item on the agenda is approval um, of the agenda. And do we have a motion for that? I make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll so second that. We've it's got second. a motion from Alder Morgan and a second from Ace. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nope. Okay. So we have ourselves an agenda with the one item. The next will be um, approval of the minutes from the meeting that took a place two weeks ago today. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the October 10 revolving loan fund committee meeting? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the October 10th meeting. We have a second. Second. That's all right. We have a motion from Alder Morgan and a second from Eli Hicks uh, to approve the minutes. Any comments? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nope. So we have approved the minutes. Why don't we jump then right into the regular business then, which we have one application uh, for a revolving loan fund loan for Midwest Super Speedway and the amount of $250,000 for furniture, fixtures, and equipment for this new business, which will be located on Lombardi in Green Bay. And I know the owners here, but Wendy, why don't you kind of kick us off here and tell us a little bit about it? And I bet we're going to then have Zach come on up there. Yeah, Tell just to give you a little background this. on this application, Midwest uh, Super Speedway is a new startup business that offers customers high-speed indoor electric go-kart racing. Owner Zach Reiner has prepared a business plan and has selected the 975 Lombardi Avenue location after considering many other municipalities and sites. Nicolet National Bank will be the primary lender for this project and will be administering the SBA 7A loan for this project. The city of Green Bay will be in a subordinate position behind this primary lender and would be able to take a second place lien on all business assets. Attached in your uh, packet were the application, personal financial statements, the business plan that included three years of financial projections um, and uh, taxes of the proprietor. Um, with this, um, Anyway, it looks like he has everything in there that we require for this. Uh, we did meet with the lender and Zach a couple of times to make sure that everybody is in agreement with how this uh, loan would uh, proceed. And so that is what's all um, part of the packet today. Excellent. I would suggest we open up the meeting so Zach can talk to us about the business. Um, tell us how he came up with the idea and we can ask him a few questions and such. So. Would we have a motion to open the floor um, so Zach can talk to us about the business? I'll make a motion to open the floor. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to open the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nope. Great. And with that, and good, Zach, I'm glad you came up to the desk here with you know, love to have you tell us a little bit about where did the idea come from? You know, tell us some things about the business. I'm sure we'll have a few questions, you know, to go through with you as well on the business. Uh, but we'll kind of love to hear how this came about. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Appleton native, so I apologize from, from the south here, but uh, <laughs> there's no apology needed. <laughs> born and raised. Uh, but yeah, I grew up, you know, riding four wheelers, snowmobiles. Um, I was kind of a gearhead as a kid. I love taking things apart, putting them together. Um, and I always thought it'd be so cool to have my own racetrack. And I always thought, you know, oh, maybe like get some land up north and things like that. 
then as I got older and I started seeing all these like big box stores and things like that going out of business, it's like, well, why don't we look at something that could be indoors, smaller scale? And so probably five years ago or so, I started researching you know, indoor high-speed go-karting. And that's what kind of led us to this point where um, I took an EC course through Fox Valley Tech to really learn the business. Because um, at that point, um, my wife and I, we had kind of a little side business where we made like custom pallet signs and things like that with a laser engraver and vinyl cutter and stuff. But we really wanted more. Um, so yeah, I started researching more and more. I took the EC course that was like a six month online kind of fast track to learn all the ins and outs of you know, preparing business plans, getting involved with, you know, the loans and things like that and how you finance uh, business like this. Um, so yeah, that started back in 2020, um, right around when COVID hit. So not necessarily the best time to start a business. Um, but yeah, at that time I was looking at some facilities in Appleton because um, at that time, the Fox River Mall had a couple large box stores that were vacant. Um, and I was really looking for the Taj Mahal of, of indoor entertainment at that point, which was extremely um, expensive, right? So um, over the last few years, I kind of reevaluated and scoped the project down a little bit more to be more manageable for my wife and I to, to handle on our own. Um, thankfully, Will's been along the ride the whole time, so he's kind of seen the evolution of the Taj Mahal down to something a little bit more manageable. Um, but yeah, so along the way, I've been able to meet with a lot of different owners for these different carting facilities. There's one in Milwaukee. Um, there's a few in Chicago, down in Iowa, over in Michigan. Um, great people to work with, very inviting um, uh, business, and just learning so much from these individuals. And in this, um, when I found this location here in Green Bay, I got in touch with a consultant that's been in the industry for over 20 years as an operator and owner. So he was really able to help me kind of dial in my numbers, dial in the layout, and really get me connected into the industry with, you know, uh, parts to purchase, barriers, um, and the people that are really in the middle of this, of this business. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what uh, where it's come or where it's been. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of Midwest super speed then. Okay, so a couple questions, and, and I'll, you know, anybody is certainly, but just a couple just kind of going through the business plan. Mm -hmm. Now, you referenced a ROBS program yep. and the 20% down payment. I'm not familiar with that. So sure. what is that? So that uh, stands for Rollover for Business Startup. So what that does is it, there's certain companies out there that, that help facilitate this, but it's a way that you can roll over like 401k funds into okay. an existing 401k so you don't take the, the tax hit. So for example, okay. if you want to take out $100,000 from your 401k, you're going to have probably 30% income tax plus yep. 10% tax on top of that. Whereas um, the company I'm going through, it's a $5,000 flat fee and they set up the accounts for you and they transfer the funds over for you. And then you just pay monthly because with the C Corp, you have to maintain a 401k plan and okay. that's, there's administration fees and things like that. And the company does that for you, okay. like 150 bucks a month. Okay. Um, so instead of paying 40% on your 401k, you can pay five grand plus that monthly. And it's a lot more cost effective. Got it. I had never heard of this. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's uh, really becoming popular with interest rates kind of fluctuating and, okay. and construction rates. So it's something we're seeing more of in the applications. Okay. People are using their own, they're financing their own Mm -hmm. That's how they're getting their downs. Yeah, it's okay. actually a, a way to invest in yourself, right? Sure. So you're putting the stock in. You're doing your a 401k model. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're making programs available yep. and being creative. And then what is at the property today? So um, currently it's a multi-use space. There's uh, Bad Monday Brewing is on one part of the facility. Um, Santorac Club is on the other. Yeah. Um, they are moving in a couple other uh, businesses. One that I was aware of was um, it's like a makeup company that is trying to get to influencers. So like say you're an influencer, you want your own eyeliner. Yep. Don't bring. They'll reach out and they'll kind of develop that with them and market okay. it. For them. Okay. Um, but otherwise it was a manufacturing space. Um, the former cuts and shark. Yeah. Okay. It, it's in the space there. And, mm -hmm. and how many square feet is it? Uh, the building itself is 70,000 square feet. I'll be occupying about 50,000 square feet of that. Okay. And then, um, hey, insurance and liability. 
Mm -hmm. um, you got people going around fast, oh, yeah. I'm assuming, or that seems to be the intent. Mm -hmm. how, how do you manage that? How is that done? Right. So these facilities always have a waiver, right, to make sure everyone's understanding of their responsibilities and the responsibilities of the company. But then there's also specific um, insurance companies out there that have specific programs for this. Um, they've been around for a long time in the industry. Um, so yeah, surprisingly, it's not as expensive as, as one might think. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely key players out there that handles insurance for this type of activity. Okay. And then, um, you know, you reference in the business plan, like a general manager mm -hmm. for the business. Is that a salaried person? And is that an hourly person? And then what are you doing with them on kind of an incentive structure sure. to make sure they're running the business mm -hmm. in the way you would if you could be there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's ideally a salary position, um, and then it would be some type of uh, bonus structure based on my compensation with, because um, it could also be my my sales rep. So reaching out to other yep. um, businesses in the area, you know, setting up uh, private events, um, you know, full facility rentals, things like that. So they could earn a commission off of that. Um, Hey, in the business plan, you've got revenue coming in, some from racing, some from beverages, some from arcades. And then it also talks about a membership. Mm -hmm. You know, as you think about, you know, the first year or even three years in the business, how's that revenue split going to be? Like what percent of your revenue is coming from each of those? So primarily you're probably 60 to 70 percent of just races. Okay. Um, party events is about another 20 percent. Um, arcade, you're looking at about 10%. Um, and then private and uh, corporate events is probably another 10%. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then advertising as a percent of revenue year one. I think you've got about $38,000 in there. But then that fee stayed consistent. Like, how did you estimate what advertising should be in the business? So um, a lot of that came from my consultant. So what they'll do is they'll go to different businesses and offer, like, say you like to do an annual, you know, company out. Yep. Okay. So we'll offer a package of say, you know, five thousand dollars. We'll advertise for you, and for that, we'll trade off. You guys can come in for, you know, a, you know, company outing at the facility. Yep. Um, we'll also have areas within the facility for displaying. So say we have a race car driver that's really interested in, you know, indoor storage for the winter, right? we can have some type of advertisement with them where we'll park their car in our facility for several months for yep. a set fee. Yep. Um, and, and the revenue estimates that you have in the business, especially the first year, right, which is always the hardest to tell, how did you come up with those? So a lot of that's going to be based off of a capacity analysis. So say we have 20 carts, you can only run about eight to 10 of them at a time. Um, and each time, it each race is about eight minutes. So our target is six turns per hour. So that's six times, we'll say 10. You got 60 10 carts going around an hour. So maximum capacity is, we'll say a million, right? And obviously you're not going to have 100% capacity all the time. So yeah. we scale that back to say, 30, 40, 60% and see how that lines up and how it compares to the expenses. Okay. And then also take your industry average as to how other facilities similar to this are doing. And that's kind of how you find your sweet spot. Okay. And then how do you initially get the word out that you exist? Yeah, you're absolutely. There, um, you, you know, right? Because that seems to me like one of the biggest challenges. Oh, for sure, yeah. How do you, how do people find out? Yeah, uh, surprising. Good question. Yeah. What did you do yesterday? Yeah, exactly, right? Um, so um, actually through the EC program, I was introduced to a journalist. So I had an article come out um, back in 2021 um, regarding this project. Um, so I was a bit shy when I reached out to her again, thinking she might think I'm crying wolf or something here, but I was like, hey, getting closer. Um, but I actually had an interview yesterday to do a follow-up article on the progress of the of the business. Um, so that was a huge traction. And then surprisingly, when I first started this, I set up a Facebook page and within two or three days, I had a hundred or sorry, a thousand followers. Um, and people are still reaching out asking, like, when are your hours, when are your opening? So it's definitely gained a lot of traction quickly. Um, and definitely spreading the word through businesses, um, you know, B2B sales, things like that. And are you still now in the business plan? You talked about opening in November. Is um, that for real? Well, that's um, 
So I think when I submitted that, it was probably back in October. Okay. Um, so most likely we'll have the building secured in November and then there'll probably be an opening like mid December. Okay. And, and I want to congratulate you on, I don't know how you pull the business plan together and what help you may or may not have had in doing it. It's one of the best ones I've read. It oh. was super coherent and clear. And then I saw you were an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, okay, that's why the numbers all tick and tie together. <laughs> and they reference throughout the document. It's right in your strength. Isn't it? Yeah. But it's it's one of the best business plans that I've read in here. I thought it was really clear um, about how you had done your research and what the market was and where it was coming from. So that was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I, I want to certainly open it up for other questions as well. Yeah, I have a couple. Um, I guess, Zach, first question. Um, is there a reason, um, I guess, did you look at becoming a franchisee at all as far as, I know, I believe there's some down in Milwaukee or Minneapolis where they're, you know, go, uh, carting franchises. So I right. don't know if you're looking at maybe, is that a possibility that you looked into was licensing something like that? Yep, and that's kind of where the name came from with Midwest Super Speedway because, you know, being a homegrown person, it's like, oh, everything's got to be local, right? But then you think, okay, how can we make this a little bit bigger than what it is by, you know, calling it Midwest Super Speedway that gives you a little bit broader audience so that you can possibly expand out into, you know, Chicago area, over into Minneapolis, over into Detroit and things like that. So um, there's definitely opportunity there. Gotcha. I, I guess more so my question is, did you, have you considered, I guess, was uh, when you're looking into this, becoming you just obtaining a license for an existing franchise for that? Uh, that would be down the road. Uh, so right now it's more so focused on number one, um, you know, first location. And then once we establish that, um, then we can look at, you know, three to four years down the road, possibly establishing the franchise. But uh, at this point, main focus is going to be just the, the number one location. Okay. And then um, with that building that you're going in, is that a, do you have a solid storefront presence or is it like tucked away in the corner? Because I know that's kind of a bigger building. I don't know if you, will you, will you have a solid storefront where it's kind of easy for people to be, like looking for it to find? Right. So we'll actually have, um, you know, uh, sign frontage on Lombardi Avenue. Um, and then we will also have sign frontage on the actual address will be on Tony Canadeo. So it'll be between the entrance of uh, Badger State Brewing and Sanderac. Um, So we are um, constructing that area. We're widening out the sidewalk. It's kind of tucked in there right now, uh, but we'll be okay. putting in a double door. Um, and there's a bit of a, a walk into the building from that area. It used to be the employee entrance, uh, but we'll be having a shared parking lot with uh, Badger State Brewing. Um, okay. So hopefully get the signage out there. Um, and we'll also have signage. I'm actually meeting with some folks today to look over the property um for how we're going to put signage out on the on the road so that we can better direct cars in there gotcha. Eli also is working with um a couple of staff members on our uh, facade grant program as well so there's um he's working at multiple levels with city staff here and other programs just okay uh, feel it's worth mentioning that there's other um people that he's working with as well on this project sounds good So I have a question. Uh, say a family decides I'm going to go do this outing, drive up from Appleton, wherever, and they get there. Is there limits on who can actually operate these carts? I mean, is there age limits? I, yep, can so anybody just uh, come in there? Right. So we will have two different offerings. We'll have adult carts um, and then we'll have junior carts. So the junior carts are designed for kids usually seven years of old seven years of age or older um, and that's kind of a height restriction so you have to be like 48 inches or higher so you know there could be some flexibility with age but it's really just based on height um, so really those junior cards could be for younger kids and then the adult cards are for anybody that's really 16 years or older i think the height restriction on those is like 54 inches or 56 inches and taller okay is there a waiver if you wanted to go up? I know I'm going to get asked this. A friend of mine's son is uh, 10 or 11 now. He races super carts down at Elkhart Lake. And he's going to really be interested in something like this, I'm sure. Can they wave over then? Or does the parent have any discretion? You mean if the child shows up on their own? No, no, no. Say a family comes and you've got a 
like this young man, he's racing go karts in Elkhart Lake already. Yep. But he might not be at the height that goes to the carts that he'd be more fun in. Oh, I see. Um, we we would. I mean, have this has nothing to do with the loan. I'm just gonna. I know I'm gonna get asked this question. Right. No, and I mean, he would just get restricted to the junior carts. That's all. I mean, unfortunately, you gotta you gotta cut it off somewhere. Even though he's a professional racer, uh, based on our insurance, we would have to limit him to the uh, junior carts. I'm kind of glad to hear you do that. Also, uh, is there anything involved in this, like uh, racing series, that would take it for a weekend or something and do series? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we plan on doing leagues. Um, so you could do like a corporate league. You could do private leagues if a group of people want to come in and do leagues. So, yeah, we can definitely, uh, we're definitely be offering that as well. And I forgot if I saw it in a packet or not. What are your hours of operation? Uh, typical hours are going to be Sunday through Thursday, uh, about 10 to 10. Um, and then Friday and Saturday would be like noon to midnight. Thank you. Any other questions? Did Will, did you have anything to add from Nicolay since you're on the line today and made time for this meeting? Yeah, I just uh, to kind of give people comfort as to where we're at, uh, Will Depius at Nicolay Bank, um, we have credit approval at this point, uh, have all the SBA application docs ready uh, for Zach to sign uh, for SBA lending. We do that under our own authority. So at this point, we're past the hard part from a credit perspective. We just need a bunch of signatures on a really tall stack of paper, and then uh, we'll be good to go on our end. Well, thank you. And then a question then, Wendy, to you, and while we're still in here, just in case we have to go back to Zach on it, mm -hmm. is um, something in my head said equity needed to be 20% in it, but it didn't look like in the application that it was. So can you walk me through that? Yeah, so we um, typically um, do an equity position, and, and usually on the amount, especially when it's a $250,000 loan, we usually try and get a mortgage or something like that. Um, we did speak with um, Nicolay, and they're going to have the first on all the business assets, and so that really to structure this loan, and the only way to proceed was to have a second on all the business assets, because there isn't a mortgage-related piece. Um, we also always have a personal guarantee, but that was, um, that's kind of the best package that we could uh, bring forward on this startup. Okay. But we're not, um, it's not a formal written requirement to have 20% equity into the project. No, but we try and aim for that. Okay, got yeah, it. Okay. That's, a, that's a goal, I think. Uh, more than a hard rule. Got it. That's. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a hard rule. Yeah, it's not a hard rule. We, the loan committee and staff, have come up with those rules. We can design this program any way we wanted to. Yep. But it is a, it is kind of a, something we always aim for. Okay. We'd like to do that when when it's possible. And then the ask and for slash recommendation right is a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan. Yes. Um, and it's interest rate of 4%, amortized 10 years. Um, the city would be second position, business assets with a personal guarantee. And then the requirement is eight full-time equivalents over the next 18 months. Yes, I also wanted to add one thing that I did write in there, but I don't think it got into, I might've um, added it after the recommendation got posted. But uh, Zach and both uh, Will and I have uh, talked about this. And um, they're going to do a, a period of interest only. And we'd like to ask the committee to consider a 12 month interest only period. Um, with a business like this, it's really important for them to have cash flow to be able to advertise very heavily in the first year to be able to get success rates happening. And so to free up some of the cash flow um, for the first 12 months, we'd like most of that. and. Uh, Will has really thoroughly, you know, been along for the journey and has talked about that, that they're going to do an interest only period as well um, with their loan. And so we'd like to ask this committee to grace them with 12 months interest only on okay. uh, this 10 year um, amortization uh, of this loan, um, if that works out, because we know that startup that once they get their following, things seem to fall into place much easier, but that yep. first year is going to be an upward Plan. And and so um, 
And just from a ballpark, because then, right, then essentially then they'll be amortizing the principal over the nine. years two through 10, so mm -hmm. in nine years. And and what is the difference that'll make in the payment? Any idea? Uh, I know Stephanie ran them. It's not It's not, it, it wasn't very much. It's, you know, it's a couple hundred dollars, but it's not, it's not horrible. Okay. Um, and we've had, we've had it happen before that it's been a bigger adjustment because yep. it's only 12 months it's not that bad yeah. um and it's over 10 years so okay. i can't remember the exact amount i think his it's like 800 and some dollars for the first year that's just the interest and then it's the race you're gonna get there first it's gonna be their first. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I know exactly where it is, but I can't get to it because I'm recording. Can't choose. <laughs> it's about twenty five hundred dollars. So yeah, I was, I was gonna say I thought it was twenty five, and I think without that it was around two thousand. Okay. Without it, so I think it, it, it adjusts about a five hundred dollar a month yeah. difference. Okay, so six grand of that's for quote unquote advertising. Okay, good. And then, but then Nicolay is is talking about doing the same thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a different amount, and I believe will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're looking at a six month um amortization schedule or a six month interest only period um when we spoke back and forth we could either match them or go for a little longer and they can always pay early but we just thought that that um, was something when steph and i were running the numbers that would be um something to start with yep. as discussion point and i'm assuming exactly you're not opposed to that idea. Okay. the bank side will be six months interest only and then amortizing in full over 10 years so Ours is 10 years, six months is how we're doing it. So the additional six months on that. So okay. theirs is a little different structure. So it's, so Nicolay is doing well, we'll call it 10 and a half years on the full. Correct. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure. Good question. Thank you for that. Um anything else? Wendy, I got a question on would we I guess would we actually be in second position on the lien? Would we not be in third with the SBA and Nicolay? You know that is true. Yes. No. It, no, there there's only one note for the bank. So for the bank side of it, it's a shared lien between bank and SBA. Um so yeah, you'd truly be in a second position. A little different than our previous uh, loans, so thank you, Will, for clarification. Um, any other questions, Ace or Eli or Bill? Um, no, I, I think it's a great idea. I love the concept. I would definitely um, be on board with uh, uh, interest for twelve months. You know, as a former recipient, I know how crucial that is you know, being able to not have that hanging over your head, at least for the first year. So looking forward to it. We'll definitely come check it out. Thank you. No, and it looks like the business, right? If you can get the customers coming in the door, mm -hmm. so right, super critical to the business plan, the business will then be profitable. Oh, yeah. um, so it's right, getting through that first year and, and getting people aware of it and knowing it as an option. And, I heard there's a big event coming to town in the spring that should hopefully be good for you guys yeah, as well. Yeah. So hopefully mm, that's how about that? Yeah, how about all that? Which is great. <laughs> I think people will love having that, you know, something to do. You can't drink 24 seven. Well, well, there is a question on that. Like, are you going to make sure that somebody doesn't go to Badger State Brewery and then go to your establishment? Yep. So that'll be on the discretion of the employees. So a lot of these establishments may have a bar restaurant inside. Um, and part of the POS system that we'll be utilizing actually tracks, you know, everyone kind of has a number. And so um, like customer one, two, three, four, five, right? They're signed up for, you know, three track or races for that day. But then it, flags their account when they have a drink because it'll show like, oh, customer one, two, three, four, five, they just had a drink at the bar. It's like, sorry, you can no longer have these races. So it's kind of built in. Whereas when you have separate businesses like this, it's going to be more on the discretion of our employees. But so you yourself will be making sure that there's no crossover right. with that. Okay. Yeah. So like most likely we'll be able to do partnerships with Badger State Room to have like company outings and it'll be like, well, carting first, then you guys can go and have your yeah. fun, not the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay, then I would uh, I would make the motion that we go back to regular business. Do we have a second? I'll second that. 
We have a motion and a second then from Bill to go back to regular order of business. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nope. Um, do we have a motion then for uh, the recommendation on the loan? I'll make a motion that uh, we approve the request by Midwest Super Speedway for $250,000 from the CDBG-RLF program for the furniture fixtures and equipment for this new business, which will be located at 975 Lombardi Avenue, Green Bay, Wisconsin, with an interest rate of 4% amortized for 10 years with a second position lien on all business assets and a personal guarantee and will be required to create eight full-time equivalent positions over the next 18 months with the first 12 months to be interest only. And do we have a second on that? I'll second that. So we have a motion from Alder Morgan and a second from Ace. Um, are there any comments or questions? No. Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No one opposed. The motion um, has carried and congratulations, Zach. We're super excited uh, to see the Midwest Super Speedway open. Thank you so much. And my hunch is you might see a few folks. Um, so um, from here. Okay. I think that's with that one. Is there anything we needed to do in informational? No, in informational, we just met. Okay. So there really hasn't been any uh, changes since we were recently through. Um, so I do not have anything else to add since the 10th. Great. Then I'm going to do a Harry Meyer special and the chair rules that were adjourned. So that's it. Thanks for coming, everyone. Appreciate all your help. So thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, even though it's on TV. <laughs> Thank you again. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Thanks all. Thanks everybody.